Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Let us pray. Liberating God, we thank you for the steadfast courage of your servant, Polly Murray, who fought long and well. Unshackle us from the chains of prejudice and fear, that we may show forth the reconciling love and true freedom, freedom which you revealed in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the letter to the Galatians. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore, the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian, for in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs, according to the promise. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 119, verses 7, 17 through 24. <clears throat> Deal bountifully with your servant, that I may live and keep your word. Open my eyes that I may see the wonders of your law. I am a stranger here on earth. Do not hide your commandments from me. My soul is consumed at all times with longing for your judgments. You have rebuked the insolent. Cursed are they who stray from your commandments. Turn, Turn from, from me shame, shame and rebuke, for I have kept your decrees. Even though rulers sit and plot against me, I will meditate on your statutes. For your decrees are my delight, and they are my counselors. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Then Jesus began to speak to them in parables. A man planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a pit for the wine press, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the season came, he sent a slave to the tenants to collect from them his share of the produce of the vineyard. But they seized him and beat him, and sent him away empty-handed. And again he sent another slave to them. This one they beat over the head and insulted. Then he sent another, and that one they killed. And so it is with many others. Some they beat, and others they killed. He had still one other, a beloved son. Finally he sent him to them, saying, they will respect my son. But those tenants said to one another, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and the inheritance will be ours. So they seized him, killed him, and threw him out of the vineyard. What then will the owner of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the tenants and give the vineyards to others. Have you not read this scripture? 
the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. When they had realized that he had told this parable against them, they wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowd. So they left him and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. One of the deep joys of honoring the saints in our calendar is that sometimes our lives connect with theirs in a way that feels personal. I never met Paulie Murray, but I was mentored by someone who knew her and admired her. And through the eyes of my mentor, this remarkable woman came to life and has become so much more than a name in a, in a liturgical calendar. Paulie Murray was a groundbreaker in many ways. She is, I think, a saint for our times, for this moment in our national life. Her contribution is finally being recognized, and recently a Yale College has been named for her. There was a New Yorker, New Yorker article about her in 2017, which is gripping reading. Murray was an orphan. She says the salient fact about her childhood is that she was an orphan. She was denied admission to the University of North Carolina because of her race, denied admission to Harvard because of her gender. She was a civil rights activist, a campaigner for women's rights, and a formidable lawyer. Murray saw unusually clearly the intersectionality of racism, misogyny, homophobia, and white supremacy. Here is this legendary, unstoppable woman who had the audacity to think she could be a lawyer and an academic at traditional bastions of privilege like Yale and Brandeis, and the first female priest of color, and a poet and author, and write what was called the legal Bible that won Brown versus Board of Education in 1954. Oh, and by the way, be the only female hired by the law firm Paul Weiss in 1950. And did I mention that Murray was what we would call gender queer? long before the language existed. Yet what my mentor at Yale Divinity School, Joan Forsberg, admired most of all was Murray's courage and resilience under pressure in the face of repeated bias and repeated exclusion. Recent bibliographical studies of Murray's life have uncovered the psychological struggle underneath all of the achievements, which for me amplifies how remarkable Murray is. If I may, let me take you back for a minute to 1986, when I started out at Yale Divinity School, fresh off the plane from the UK, 22 years old. Women had only been ordained for 10 years at that time, officially. To me at 22, 10 years seemed like a long while, but it was nothing, the blink of an eye. At that time, women training to be priests like me were taught to lower their expectations, to be grateful for crumbs that fell from the straight white married with two kids male table. We were taught that if we were fortunate, we might find a curacy or youth position. But becoming a full-time rector of a substantial parish that could afford a man was unlikely. At that time, there were two women priests in Connecticut, my diocese, who were part-time vicars or priests in charge, and that was Connecticut, a progressive diocese. When a woman was called to be a full-time curate, it was a big deal in those days, and news traveled fast around the chapel and refectory. No text or Facebook or email yet, word of mouth. I thought that I had overcome some barriers to be in seminary after being told that women couldn't be priests in the Church of England. Fine, I will go to America then, was my response. I refused to think of myself as a victim. I wasn't gonna give prejudice that much power over my life. But there are barriers and there are barriers. Paulie Murray faced more barriers than I even dreamed of. And we can now read about all of them online. There is the Paulie Murray Project. Paulie Murray had guts. Courage comes in all shapes and sizes. My mentor Joan felt herself to be lacking in confidence and courage compared with Paulie Murray. 
But we all need courage in this life, and it is not comparative. It is relative to what we're called to do. Joan's own inspiring version of courage was different, but equal. Joan had the courage to be open and questioning in her leading and learning. She was a mentor to so many. Like Henry Nouwen, another of her own mentors, Joan revealed the transparency and vulnerability that she felt to be a great gift for those who teach and those who learn. The courage not to be Teflon, not to pretend to know it all, not to need to have all the answers ahead of time, not to defend against questions and critique, the courage to ask, what did I learn? The courage to embrace diversity, not just intellectually, but trying it on in the heart, seeking to listen and understand the view of those less privileged. These things, Joan, a white woman of privilege, learned from women of color who were her neighbors in the slums of New Haven where she voluntarily lived, and from Paulie Murray, who wouldn't take no for an answer. Recently, at a St. Luke's school board meeting, the Chief Officer for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, Dr. Brad Braxton, asked, who teaches the prophets? Who teaches the prophets? Paulie Murray did and does. She teaches people who themselves become prophets and mentor many. What's your courage? This is how the kingdom of God grows. It pushes through one by one in mentoring those who come after us. With a steady beat, the Holy Spirit inspires the work of companioning, advising, guiding, advocating, opening doors for others that were once shut in our own faces. Who mentored you? Who guided you in the way that you were called to walk? And who, who are you shepherding and guiding and companioning in your own life? Who teaches the prophets? Paulie Murray is a prophet for the ages, and I think particularly a saint for this moment. She inspires us. Be who God made you to be in all your multifaceted, sometimes conflicted, sometimes contradictory glory. Courage. What a beautiful gift. Pass it on. Amen. The prayers of the people are form three. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That, that we, we all, all may, may be, be one. one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That, that your, your name, name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That, that they, they may be faithful, faithful ministers of, of your word and sacraments. And sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That, that there, there may, may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That, that our, our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That, that they, they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. That Let light, light perpetual shine, shine upon them. them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we, May we also, also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage, we may always be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer, and know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whom all our intercessions are acceptable through the Spirit, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that, that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will 
and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them, them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give, give God, God thanks and, and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, for the wonderful grace and virtue declared in all your saints, who have been the chosen vessels of your grace and the lights of the world in their generations. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself, in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ, Christ has died, Christ, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Holy Mother of God, Blessed Polly Murray, Blessed Luke, our patron, and all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. A 
Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your, your Son, our, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.